Welcome to Evolution. My name is Andre Lawrence, and this is my channel about electric cars from a different perspective. And if you have ever wondered about anti-rust treatments on electric cars, well, this is the place that I had it done. If you want to find out all of the details, stick around. I'll show you in 10 seconds. Over the last three and a half years of me being an electric car owner, this being my second electric car, there's always the question that comes around when winter points its ugly head, as it has now, it is freezing. And new EV owners always ask the question, should I or can I have my electric car rust-proofed or anti-rust treated? Now with regards to Kia Canada, if you go to a dealership and you ask them, can you have your car treated and it's an electric car, they will say, no, you'll void the warranty. Well, that's a lie. Sort of. The warranty that you avoid is the rust or rust proofing warranty from Kia. But in all honesty, their warranty says that if it perforates, they'll fix it. By then, it's too late. I don't want my car to rust. So I would rather have my car treated and that way it doesn't rust. Now, with regards to warranty of anything else like the battery and the motor and all of the important parts, what's important is that you go to a shop that specializes in electric cars that uses a product that is not going to harm any of the electronic components or wiring and knows how to apply it and does zero drilling. That is one of the big deals. You don't want somebody drilling holes into your car to inject a product and maybe puncture a wire as they drill or whatever. I just don't want people drilling holes. Now, having a job like this done at a specialty shop like the one that I used is not cheap. So it's not gonna be a $100 a corner shop special price. It costs 650 Canadian, but it is a five and a half hour job where they dismantle the vehicle to be able to treat everything without spraying wiring or without spraying any of the components. So you'll never have a problem with warranty. Now, let me show you what that looks like in a sped up version and cut back quite a bit because it was about five and a half hours of recording with three cameras. And then I'll tell you a little bit about what was done. Now it all starts with putting a tarp on the car to prevent any potential fumes from getting onto the paint. But this shop is so well ventilated that I'm really not worried about that. Now the next thing is to dismantle the car or remove the plastic trim and some of the other stuff you're about to see. But I figured while he's got the hood open and all this plastic trim out, I would give you a quick look at what you usually don't see. You've got the motor, you've got the inverter, the reduction gear, you've got the electronic brake module, you've got the heat pump and all sorts of other goodness that's under there. So pretty neat, something you usually don't get to see. Now the next thing that gets done is to pull the door cards. Now you pull the door cards so that it gives you easy access to inside the doors to properly apply the rust proofing. Now something I found very interesting is once these door cards were off, you could see the back side of the door card actually has a lot of sound insulation. And the inside of the door doesn't have just plastic wrapper with a bunch of stuff bolted onto the metal. It's got an actual plastic door insert that holds all of the components. Next thing is this door sill. Now the door sill plate must have been made on a Friday because none of the plastic tabs that hold the little shiny bit in are actually bent over. Now the other three were okay, uh, but I thought it was quite interesting that this one has none of these plastic tabs. And you just pop it up and you can remove it completely. Well, while it was out, I folded those over and that is now fixed, but yep, Friday parts special. Now that the door cards are removed, the next thing is to remove all of the plastic trim and panels that are underneath the car to give access to everything that's down there. While I've got the car up on the lift and some of this trim removed, I thought I would give you a quick look at what's being hidden by these little belly plates. Something I found interesting is that the EV6 has these little sound insulation pads placed a little bit here and there underneath the car. Quite interesting. This is not the only time that you're going to see these kinds of pads, and some of them are in very interesting places that I wouldn't have expected. One thing that was spotted by the person who treated my car was the fact that there's a little bit of a design, let's call it a design flaw with regards to places that are more northern or have winter. Now there's this giant hole uh, right here that actually would let a ton of snow and ice, including the salt or whatever other chemicals that are in there, to basically hide inside. And as things warm up, then they'll create humidity and corrosion. And that's not great. 
and this is the solution that I'll be using. I'm going to be buying a set of Canadian Tire cheapo plastic straight mud flaps that I will use only in the winter because I think it doesn't look great, but it will prevent any of the snow, slush, and ice, and other junk and chemicals that might be in there for the winter from accumulating, as well as causing rust or corrosion in that nicely opened spot. Thanks, Kia. I appreciate it. Now, since I've got parts of the car exposed that are usually not visible from any angle, I thought I would give you a close-up look to see at all the stuff that's hiding underneath. The next thing to do is to remove the wheel well liners, or the inner fenders. Essentially, these are plastic guards that protect the car from getting junk splashed around inside the body. There are several retainers and clips. He removes them and pulls that off. You'll see there's some foam insulation on these as well. The next thing to go is this foam spongy thing that fills with water because it's right below where the water drips down from the windshield. It makes no sense that they would put this here because that's a great place for corrosion to happen immediately. Now the Nero EV has the exact same thing and I had those removed from the Nero as well. So now we're just doing a rinse and repeat on the other wheels. You'll see there's more insulation on this fender liner as well. And here's a quick look at what it looks like. Now this next part is going to be slowed down a teeny bit because I wanted to show you something that was pointed out to me by the person doing the treatment. Both road fenders of the EV6, or the inner part where there's metal, have grounding contacts. Now on the passenger side you see you've got this one, and on the driver's side there are two grounding contacts for several wires. Now a little anecdote he gave to me was a Tesla started having some electrical problems after a couple of years, and eventually it was found to be that these had corroded to the point where there was no ground happening, which was causing all sorts of computer malfunctions. So a quick shot of rust proofing treatment to protect the wires from having the corrosion happen will save a lot of headaches in the future. Another interesting thing about the application of this rust proofing treatment is that there are multiple nozzles that are used to get into the different areas. And he starts off with this flexible hose and uses different length tubes as you can see on this wall here, as well as another solid type of tube. Now, this is more of an art than it is a thing of labor because the pistol that he's using actually has a two-handed configuration. Essentially, there's one that controls the flow of the product that comes out and there's an other controller that controls the amount of air that comes out. So, depending on how much product and how far you want to push it, you have to use both of your hands to get into the appropriate location with the right amount of product. This is definitely not something that's easy and that takes a ton of practice to do properly. So it is actually quite impressive to see. And you'll see this a little bit later because he applies it in places where I wouldn't even dream of trying to put some of this product. Now just before we get to the main part of the application, this is all of the little fastidious things that have to be done before. You'll notice that he injects or puts the product into every single opening or structure that he can have access to, whether it's a crash bar, a crash tube, a suspension part, or anything that he can get his tube into, except for anything that's related to electronics or motor or battery or cabling. So this is a very time consuming job as you can tell, but it does get applied everywhere and will offer incredible protection over the years. And now comes the part with what I call the two-handed magic wand. This is the device that he uses that has both controls, the air flow as well as the product flow, that is, it looks really difficult to apply. And he uses it as if it's just an extension of his arms. It's actually quite impressive to see. And you'll see when he does the back plate for where the brakes are, I would never even dream of attempting to put this product where the brakes are, but he applies it as if it was nothing at all, and you'll see that very shortly. Now just in case you're wondering, you can see that he's applying the product around where the battery is, uh, but in no way does he apply the product to the cables or the connectors or anything that relates to the battery system itself or the electronics. 
Um, it looks super easy what he's doing, but he's actually painting this product around everything. It's, it's pretty amazing. Now you'll notice from this angle you'll see some of the cloud of product being pulled down. That's because not only does he have ventilation in the ceiling, but he's also got ventilation on the ground. He's got this big fan that blows the uh, fumes and everything towards another ventilation system. And it's actually got a filter on the back of it, so very well ventilated. I had no problems. There was barely any smell while I was watching him do this. The difference between what he was applying before and what he's applying now, it's not the product itself, it's how he's applying it. Previously he was putting the little application tube into all the little nooks and crannies to get inside the tubes. Well now he's applying the product to the outside of any of the structures or tubes that are there or anything that could corrode that would be bad to have corrosion on. So when he's applying it near the brakes, it's not on the brakes itself, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, the brakes worked very well after he was done. Another small detail, anywhere there were some pins pushing through the body or there were seams, he made sure to treat and to have proper protection. Now, this is the part that I was mentioning before where I wouldn't have ever tried putting this product near the brakes. Well, he applies it as if it was nothing and this is on the back plate. In other words, this thin piece of metal that usually rusts after several years. Well, the back plates on my EV6 are extremely well protected now. While applying the product to the metal of the fenders, he takes the time to also apply it to any of the metal parts of the suspension that could corrode or rust, causing problems over the long term. This is the added benefit of having an application pistol that has such precise control, as he can apply it to some very, very small or confined spaces, or to some parts that are surrounded by other parts without actually coating everything. With the underneath of the car as well as the wheel wells done, now it's time to move on to the doors. And this is the advantage of having removed the speakers as he's able to access a good portion of the door straight from here. But there are other access holes that he can use as well. And he makes sure to get to every single spot as well as coating the seams, the rolled seams of the door to make sure that no corrosion or rust can happen there as well. The last two things to treat are under the hood and the trunk hatch. Now, even though the hood is made of aluminum, he treats the inside of the hood structure with his flexible hose because aluminum can also corrode. It won't rust, but it'll turn white and flaky and not be very nice after a few years.
The last step after having treated the entire vehicle is to do the reassembly basically in reverse order. So what he's doing is not only reassembling the parts, but he takes the time to apply a little bit of oil or lubricant to some of the metal fasteners to avoid them rusting in the future. Just another little added detail that'll make a difference in the long run. I really have no idea why, but watching him reinstall the panels underneath the car for me is extremely satisfying, so I figured I would leave this in the video. So what do I think of having my car rust-proofed? Well, I can tell you from experience with our past two electric cars, my Nero EV and my wife's Kia Soul EV that she still has, that the vehicles are far better off having been protected than not. And I can say this from experience, over the last 35 years I've had many vehicles, and the vehicles that I chose to not have treated but we kept for a long time, well, they ended up rusting. The point of getting an electric car is to be more sustainable, to pollute less, and keeping a car as long as possible is one way to do that. If you get an electric car and you don't have it treated, and then it rusts, and then everything else is good but the body, it kind of defeats the purpose. Now, inevitably, I'm going to be getting the question, Andre, where did you have your car treated? Because I'd like to go have it done there. Well, the person that did my car, that protected my vehicle, his name is Steve Balzuk, and I'd like to start by saying, thank you, Steve. I really appreciate you taking the time to do my vehicle because I know that you're booked solid for the next year. And that brings up the point is, he asked me to make this video to help educate people not to get business, but to help them understand that you can rust-proof an electric car if it's done properly. Now, if you find his company, and he's near Quebec City, and you call him to book a reservation for your vehicle, there's a good chance he'll either say, I'm booked for a year, and can you wait? Or, I don't have the time right now because I'm booked for the next year. It's not because he doesn't want your business, it's just because lots of people are soliciting him to have their cars protected. Now, with that being said, they are amazing. His brother has a company that specializes in Tesla vehicles. He's also booked a year out. So, finding a good place to treat your car might not be the easiest thing to do, but it's well worth the investment. Now, with that being said, I want to let you know that I've got some social media links that might be of interest to you. They're linked down in the description below, as well as somewhere up here on the screen for you to see. I've got an Evolution Facebook page where I share EV-related news. I've also got an Evolution Instagram account where I post EV and non-EV-related pictures. I've also got my evolution.ca website where I have all the products that I've purchased for myself and I've reviewed a good portion of them as well as a shop where you can buy an Evolution t-shirt. If that's something that interests you, it helps support my channel. And I've also got a Kofi account. So if you feel like buying me a coffee on Kofi, well, you can do it there. And if you already have, thank you very much. I really do appreciate your support. If you like this video, please consider clicking on that thumbs up button because it tells YouTube that you like it and it tells the algorithm to share the video with other people, which kind of gets to the point that this channel helps educate people about electric cars and the more people I can show my videos to, well, the better it is. So if you do click on that thumbs up, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Now, if you really appreciated this video, then you could click on that subscribe button and the notification bell because I've got absolutely no posting schedule and it'll let you know when my new videos come out. With that being said, thanks for taking the time to watch my video. Now, the other part is who do you have do the work and will it void the warranty? Nah, see all that's crap. Now, what exactly do I mean by a company that specializes in rust proofing an electric car? Well, if you go to your corner shop that charges you 99 bucks and you're in and out in 15 minutes, for the last three and a half years, inevitably when winter points its ugly head as it has now, and it is freezing cold, there is an enormous, an enormous amount, that didn't work. <clears throat> wow, it's cold. Whew. Oh, it's inevitable, 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 okay. And if you really like this video, then please consider clicking on the notification bell and the subscribe button because it tells people
Now I gotta start all over for my vehicles, as well as everything else that relates to evolution and electric cars. Now I've got a oh, frack 